Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to explore buttons in SwiftUI so let's get straight into it. In SwiftUI we can use buttons whenever we want to make a piece of UI perform some kind of action when it's tapped. Now you can do the same thing by using a gesture but buttons allow you not only to get system styling but also provide visual feedback that an action has occurred. So let's add a button onto the screen now. So first of all we're going to add a V stack within a scroll view so we can easily scroll through all of our examples so let's do that. So now let's start typing and we'll add a button onto the screen. And as you can see, when you create a button, you have quite a few different, you know, options available to you. So you have the configuration for the button. So we'll get into this when we actually build our own button style. We can set a role for a button in action and your own custom label. You could set a localization key or you could just simply set a string on it. Or alternatively, you could even ditch the role and just have the action and the label. So you've got quite a few options that you could use. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to add in a button with a label and an action. So let's actually just do this now. Now let's actually add in a source of truth for our button so that it increments whenever it's tapped. So this could be our source of truth for this specific button. And whenever you tap it, we're just going to increment it by one. And if you want to learn more about source of truths and also state properties, you should check out my videos breaking down Swift UI state and data flow and state in Swift UI. So we'll now update our action so that you can actually see changes whenever the button is tapped. So I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down again. So I just added my button and text within another VSTAT that's nested within this one. So there's now two VSTATs. And we've just got a text property here with some text and example count on one to be printed out to uh, the screen within that text. And then when you tap that button, it's just going to increment it by one. And then we just got in our label here, some text. So let's actually resume this. So now if we actually run this, so you'll see the first thing that you need to notice is that you'll see that this button automatically is blue. Now I've not set this color on it. And the reason why this is blue is because it's actually using the system styling for the button. So you actually get this for free. And also as well, if you tap on a button, you'll notice that you almost get like a little fade effect. So you can see here that when we tap on it, it's actually increasing our source of truth by one. So this is the difference between using a button and your own tap gesture. If you use a tap gesture, you wouldn't really get this feedback and this styling for free. So right now we're actually manually incrementing it with the code within the closure, but this isn't the only way of actually doing this. If we wanted to, we could actually follow a Swift UI style guideline where you actually directly pass the function into an action and it executes your function. So let's actually look at doing this. So we're going to create another source of truth. And then below our Swift UI preview, I'm just going to write a function that allows us to increment the second source of truth we just created. Cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually use this function within our second example. So let's just copy this V stack. And I'm just going to call this example two. And then here, instead of us using example one counter, we want this to be example two counter. And then now for our button, we actually don't want to use a closure anymore. So if we actually just type this out together. So if you create an instance of button, you'll see that you have the option for action and label. So just hit enter on that. Now rather than you hit an enter here to actually get this closure instead, what you want to do is actually type out the function. So if you just type out increase counter two like so, and then on the label, you can hit enter. So if we just remove this. Cool. So you should see that this is now valid. Cool. So you may be wondering, how can you actually pass in a function directly? Well, what you need to make sure you're doing when you do this, first of all, is that you don't actually use the parentheses in the function for the button action. And also as well, well, if we actually look at the signature for this action closure here, so if I actually just type out button again, just so you can see that. So you'll notice that action, the parentheses for this closure is actually empty, similar to this. So because this matches this here, we're actually able to use our increase counter directly within our action closure. But if we were to add a parameter to our function like so, you'll notice that we actually get an error here. And the reason why we get that error is because our closure is telling us that it's actually a type void, so an empty 
closure but we have a closure here where it's expecting some kind of integer which is why these two do not match so because they don't match we're not actually able to use it so in order to do this technique you actually need to make sure that your function has an empty parameter list like so so if you just hit resume now and if we hit example two you'll see that it's working fine Sometimes you may want a button that solves a specific purpose. We have certain roles that a button can fulfill and this can be handled by using the role param in a button. So what we're going to do is create another vstack but this time it's going to have all the possible roles available to us. So let's do that now. So one thing I've done to my vstack is I've just added some space in a 32 so it can just breathe a bit more. But if you actually scroll down, so I actually added a group rather than a vstack. But if you actually scroll down, you'll see that we actually have different you know roles here so the first role that we have here is cancel and you can see it doesn't look any different to our previous um buttons the only difference is is that because we're actually calling this a cancel button in terms of accessibility the system knows what the role of this button is so if you have a you know button that needs to perform some sort of cancellation then you want to make sure that you set its role so it's clear for users who are using accessibility features the next role that we have here is destructive so you can see by default when you use a destructive role the button turns red so it's the same again except this time it's red so this indicates to the user that you're about to you know do some kind of destruction action so you only want to use this when you actually want to do something where you're deleting something you want the user to confirm that delete and then finally you have the default role here which is none so this is just a standard button that doesn't have a role of cancel or destructive so finally, before we move on, you just want to make sure that you only use the cancel role when you're actually performing a cancellation and the default role is just like this standard action here where it has nothing to do with any cancellation. So we've spoken a lot about configuration of a button, but now let's actually talk about more basic styling. So for buttons, you can actually easily style them by applying borders, background shapes, etc. And I actually did a video on borders that you should check out called Borders and Swift UI. But let's add a button in and see how we can create a red button with a rounded rectangle. Cool. So we've added a button here using the action and the label closure and then I just set the frame of it to be infinity and a minimum width, minimum height of 44 and we've also set a background on this button of red. We set the tint so the text within it will be white. And we've also clicked a rounded rectangle around this button which is why you get this rounded rectangle effect and we just added some padding on the outside of this whole button so that it just pushes it inwards so we can see it clearly. So if I was to remove this padding, you'll see that it's actually pinned to the screen. So rather than having it pinned to the screen, we're just going to add some padding around it to just bring it in so it's just more, you know, easier and visible for us to see. So let's actually just run this on the simulator and see what happens. So if we actually want to click on this button this time, you'll notice that when we actually want to click on the outside of the button, nothing is happening. If I was to tap on press me, it works. So why is the press me tappable, but not the whole button? Well, the best way to think about this, well, the best way to think about button is that it's a container wrapped around a view and the child view is what gets the action. So if you actually look at the styles that we applied, we actually apply this directly onto our button and it's actually the label view within our button that is actually tappable. So right now, because we didn't actually apply any styles onto our text, our text is being rendered out as this small rectangle here. So that's why this area is only tappable. So what we actually to do is actually apply modifiers onto our text. So we actually increase the size of it. And then by doing so, our button will basically wrap around our text making this whole area tappable. So what I'm going to do is just actually do this now and then we'll break it down so now we've made that change so this time we've actually said that we want our text so this time we've actually said that we want our text max width to be infinity and the height and we want to set a background on our text as well as the tin and the clip shape so this rounded rectangle that you're seeing on the screen now is actually going to be our text that's getting the style and not our button now the only thing I haven't moved is the padding and the reason why is because we want the button, so the actual whole button, to have the space around it on the outside. So let's actually rerun this again and see what happens. So now if we go back to our button, you'll notice that the whole area is tappable, not just the text label.
So when you're actually working with buttons and creating your own custom buttons, you want to make sure that you apply your modifiers onto the label and not the button itself so the whole thing is tappable. But what about if we actually want to create our own button style similar to the way that we did in our previous bit videos? So we can actually do this by using protocol. So we can use the button style protocol which allows us to create our own button styles. So let's actually stop this from running and we'll remove the simulator. So what we're going to do now is create a new file and we'll create a style for a button that allows us to send mail. So we'll use SF symbols and if you want to learn more about them you can check out my video SF symbols in Swift UI. Start that again. So let's create a new file called button plus send style. So let's go do command N and then we want to create a Swift UI file not a Swift UI view file. So Swift uh, and we want to create a Swift file not a Swift UI view file. So let's create this file here. And then let's name this. What we're going to do is I'm just going to actually type this out and then break it down. What we have now is our button style and you'll see that we're using the button style protocol. So by using this protocol, we actually get this function here called make body, which allows us to access and set the button configuration if we want to. So this function actually returns some kind of view. So if we wanted to, we could actually access the buttons roll if it's pressed it's roll and it's label as well and also if we wanted to here we could actually just create our own button and pass in the configuration so this is where we're going to use and create our style so i'm actually going to do a bit of typing and then we'll break it down so what we have here is a h stack and i've just simply used a sf symbol so the paper plane one and i've set the symbol variant to fill we've got a divider where we add some padding to the top and bottom of it and you'll notice here that we're actually only using the label for the configuration. So why am I not using a button? Well, the reason why is because this style is what's going to be applied onto the actual button. So I don't need to actually handle the action. I just need to handle what you visually see. The rest of the, the, rest of the actions will actually have be handled for me. So I also set a frame, a size on it, and a background as well as a foreground color of white on it and we also are going to clip a shape of around a rectangle on it as well so what we're going to do now is we're going to use our style on our button so let's actually see what it looks like when we actually use it so if I actually go back to our content view and if I just create a button and then if I just use the action label option and then for the label, I'm just going to type out some text saying send mail. And then we should have a modifier here called button style. And this will allow us to actually pass in any button style that we've just created. So this time we're going to pass in send style. So now if we just run this in the Swift UI preview, you'll see that we now have our send mail button. So going back to our styles, you'll notice that we have all the styles that we have configured within the button style and the action is automatically just handled for us so we're just styling the visuals of this button but if you just go back to our content view you'll notice that in swift ui there's a lot of this dot notation and we've created this modifier like so and we're also applying it like creating an instance of it which is fine but let's actually see how we can actually improve this by following swift ui style guidelines and using the dot notation so what we're going to do on our button style is actually create an extension so we can create a dot notation instance of our send button style. So I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down. So what we're saying here is that we're actually writing an extension on button style and we're saying that where the button style matches the send button style, then we're going to create a static computer property called send. And what this allows us to do because the static computer property, it will allow us to actually create a instance of it by using the dot notation. So let's go back to our content view and we'll leave this example. But what we'll do is we'll just duplicate it so you can actually see that they both achieve the same thing. And if we actually just scroll down here, this time what we're going to do is rather than using this dot notation, pause, rather than just using the instance of the modifier, we're going to use a dot notation. I'm just going to type out dot send. And you should see now when you hit your Swift UI previews resume button. So you should notice when you copy the button. And you, this time you have two buttons where you have the instance of the, you actually create an instance of it manually like so. 
and the dot notation, you'll see that you get the same effect, except this time, this just looks more Swift UI, so it just follows more of a Swift UI style guideline. So if you actually look at our code here, we actually might have a bit of a problem here. So let's say in our, if we're building an application and we actually want to use this send button style, like in multiple places, well, we don't want to have to keep on repeating this button style on every single button. Instead, when you're actually working with Swift UI, you want to think of everything as a collection of components. So what we should actually be doing is actually create our own button view that allows us to easily use this specific button style in multiple places. So let's see how we can do this now. So let's actually create a new Swift UI view called send button. So we just hit command N. And then this time you choose the Swift UI view. We want to create it and just call it send button. So now we have our Swift UI view. So I've just unpinned the preview from the home screen. I've just unpinned the preview from the content view. So now, so what we're going to do now is actually copy our code over. So we're going to copy this code over into our send button view. Like so. Okay, cool. So we copy this in now. So now we have our send button in here and it might look a bit strange. And the reason why that is because we've defined that we want the minimum height for it to be 55. So because it's got nothing in relation to size it, it's just filling up the whole screen, but this is fine, don't worry. So what we need to do now is that we actually need to solve another problem here. And that problem is, is that we actually have a action um, for our button, but we need to actually provide a way for our send button to communicate that it's been tapped. Now we can actually accomplish this by using a closure. So what I'm going to do is actually type this out and then we'll break it down. So what we have now is our action closure. And what we've done here is we've said that whenever someone taps our button, so when someone triggers the button action, we're going to trigger our closure action. So it's worth noting that the action that we define here is the exact same signature as the action for the button closure. So this here, the type of the closure needs to match the type for the button in order for you to do this technique that I'm trying to do. So you'll see here in our Prift UI preview as well that we're actually using the closure. So this here is expected because now our send button needs to use a closure to communicate back that, hey, I've been tapped. So let's go to our content view and actually add this send button onto the screen. So if we actually go underneath our examples that we had before, let's just type out send button. And then now you should see that we can actually use and now you can see that we can actually use our action. So if I just hit enter here, you'll see that we now get our closure. So within our closure, let's actually print out a message. And in order for us to see our message, we need to actually run this on the simulator because we can't you know, get the debug area when it comes to using um, SwiftUI previews. So let's actually run this on the simulator now. And then now, if I just clear the debug area, and if I just tap on the last button, send mail, you'll see that it actually prints out that, hey, it works. Cool. You'll notice something here when we're working with this button is that when we actually tap it, we don't get that same effect that when you get work with system buttons to indicate that, hey, I've been tapped by, you know, this little opacity tint here. So when you actually tap on the button here, we're not actually getting that same effect. So in order for us to do that, what we actually need to do is go back into our button style. And then on our H stack, we can actually check to see if the button is pressed. We can actually check to see if the button is pressed. Let's actually change the opacity of this button a bit. So after the clip shape, we're just going to do a bit of typing. So what we're saying here is that if the configuration is pressed, so when someone actually taps on the button, we're going to set the opacity for this view to be 0 0.7 or else it'll be set to one. So now let's actually run this and see what happens. And this time if we actually tap on the button, you'll see that we almost get that effect that we did before. So we get that feedback that has been tapped to the user. Cool. Okay, cool. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I really appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as well as hit the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.